This video is really going to upset the fanatics. And you know what? Since they're already going to be upset, why not upset them some more by starting this video off with a little bit of a shill? If you like this channel, you like the content that we produce here, consider becoming a patron over on Patreon, link in the description, or a channel member. To become a channel member, you just got to hit that join button and you'll have some options monthly tier one, tier two, and tier three. And on that note, a shout out to Althacore, our newest channel member. So Ruby fanatics are very, very upset today. They are turning on Rooster Teeth, turning their outrage on Rooster Teeth. And this is a bit unbelievable. Let me make a clarification as well. This is not a review for the newest chapter. There is a bit I would like to talk about, about the newest chapter, but I'm gonna keep this video to the point. I don't wanna get off on a whole tangent. So I'm gonna try to just keep this related to the outrage, why people are so upset, specifically these fanatics, are so upset with Rooster Teeth. And I actually have a tweet that kind of gives you a TLDR on, on why this is. Let me explain. So this is a picture in this tweet from a video I made two months ago. And the caption here, the tweet says, Ruby Volume 7 Chapter 3 happens. Me saying, too many people in the Ruby community only care about shipping now. And then I post that picture, of course, from two months ago, where I made a video after Chapter 3 saying, the Ruby community no longer cares about epic fights. Now it's all about ships, forcing ships. And the fanatics went crazy for me saying that. They came after me saying, F you hero, hey, no, we don't, and that sort of thing. Now, fast forward two months later, Ruby Volume 7, Chapter 12 happens. And now the fanatics are saying, F you, Rooster Teeth, you all baited fair game. You baited the shit between Clover and Crow. Like, <laughs> that's where we're at. Now we will hop over to Nyannet. This is an opinion piece I'm working on. I'm going to release this along with this video. If this video is out, chances are this article is out if you want to take a look at it over on Nyannet. I'll leave a link in the description, of course. Oh, and spoiler alert for uh, Volume 7, Chapter 12, by the way. So here's what's going on. I'm not going to read this word for word because that would be redundant. What's going on is Clover is RIP. Cro uh, Clover has been Minecrafted in the latest chapter of Ruby. And all those fanatics who were saying that Clover and Crow were 100% a romantic couple. Now they're all mad, and they're saying that Rooster Teeth baited them. Rooster Teeth baited them, th despite the fact that this was never supposed to be a ship. And even in the newest chapter that came out today, the chapter where Clover gets RIP'd, Crow and Clover literally refer to themselves as friends. That's pretty much as clear as as it gets, the characters literally said that they are friends. Yet you still have fanatics now turning their outrage on Rooster Teeth. And let me just say something about that before I explain like why they're outraged and why they thought that Clover and Crow are dating or something. This is, this is the most ridiculous thing to me. These people, these fanatics give me so much crap. Because I will criticize Rooster Teeth for some of the, in my opinion, terrible business decisions that they've had throughout 2019. And they're totally fine with all that. They're fine with people getting uh, fired from the company. They're fine with upper management messing around the animation department and not running it properly. They're fine with all these issues. But if you mess with their ships, if you mess with their ship between Clover and Crow, they want these two guys dating so bad. If you mess with that, now they're going to turn on Rooster Teeth. That's what gets them to turn on Rooster Teeth. Can you imagine that? <laughs> I, I, uh, well, you don't even need to imagine it. That's the reality. That's the reality we're in. Before I explain further how they're misinterpreting Clover and Crow's relationship so poorly, let me give you some examples of the outrage. You got some people saying, nope, I wasn't prepared. F you, Rooster Teeth. Hashtag Ruby. F Ruby, seriously. What the F was that bullshit, Ruby? I'll Minecraft you. That's a, okay, take the word ill, put a K in front. That's what this person said. That's how mad they are. These shippers want to Minecraft Kruby now because of this. Go figure. This person literally changed their at to something I can't even repeat. This is a terrible thing. You're going to say Ruby hates that now? Like, oh my gosh, man. Uh, it, it's just insane. I can't even repeat that. I'll get in trouble. Uh, so the, <laughs> if you're audio only, this person changed their at to Ruby hates blank men and the blank is you know what they wanted crow and clover to be you have some people here saying that they hate ruby now uh ruby messed up so badly and they hate ruby and rooster teeth because 
They got queer baited by rooster teeth. Basically, that's what they're saying. Despite the fact that, again, this was ne this is not baiting. There was no relationship there. These people are projecting what they want the show to be onto what the show actually is. And let me remind you again that even in the newest chapter, Crow and Clover literally refer to themselves as friends. And even when the characters in canon call themselves friends, you have fanatics on social media claiming that they were a romantic interest and Ruby and Rooster Teeth has done this great wrong because they've gone against that, that which was never a thing to begin with. Now, how are they so confused? And let me, let me, let me also add this. I can only show you so many of these examples uh, in, in video format because I will literally get in trouble repeating some of the stuff that these people have said. That's part of why I have to use a filter. Uh, the, the oof, the little oof that replaces words, that's not actually there on screen. It's a plugin I use. It replaces certain profanity with oof. So just know that. So if you want to see all these examples, check out the article. Again, link in the description. I wish I could go through it all with you, but you guys understand. And here's how these people are misinterpreting this so much. This is crazy. So it goes back to Volume 7, Chapter 3. You have a scene where Crow and Clover are teaming up together. And throughout that scene, there are some moments where you get Crow tripping. Clover catches him. Clover goes to chase after a Grim. Crow stops him. And good thing, because this giant piece of metal almost fell on Clover. And then later, you have a scene where Crow is talking about his semblance. And, you know, his semblance is the thing he's not happy about. He doesn't like his semblance. He feels it negatively affects people around him, and he always beats himself up over it. And he probably has good reason for thinking all that, to be fair. But we're not going we're not, we're not to go talk about all that. The point is, during that scene, Clover basically says, well... It's a good thing that my semblance is good fortune and gives them a, a wink. And these people, these fanatics, took this wink so out of context that they then thought, oh my gosh, these, these, these guys are going to be in a relationship 100%. This, this, this means that they're going to be in a relationship, which is just absurd. Clover is just that kind of guy. He's charismatic. He likes to, you know, he's confident. He's charismatic. And he's just giving a little wink after he's making a little joke. But it's like a, a joke in good faith, right? It's like, well, good thing uh, you're, you're lucky that my summons is good fortune. Gives a wink. Like, the signs that these two were supposed to date were never there. Never there at all. And it, it, it's just even more weird to me that so, so many people, so many of these fanatics thought that these were the signs of a romantic relationship. Do these people not know what a friendship looks like? On top of the fact that Crow literally needs a friendship. It would be healthy for him. A friendship would be very healthy for Crow. He doesn't have many friends. And Clover is a good friend slash role model in a way. Now, I'm using role model loosely because it's not really a role, role model. Uh, but Crow can learn some things from Clover because Crow doesn't like being a team leader. He likes working on his own. And I'm not saying he ever was a team leader. But there are times where he's had to step up and lead. For example, Team Ranger, uh, you know, Ruby Ju uh, Jr., Rip Pira. But you get the idea. So... Crow can still take notes from Clover and learn some things from him. And to be fair, Clover can probably learn a little bit from Crow. So it's a great potential friendship there that won't happen now uh, because of what happened this last chapter. But the point is, this was going to be a healthy, good friendship. And these people took this way out of line. And now, even in the latest chapter, when they literally refer to themselves as friends, these people are now calling Ruby and Rooster Teeth, uh, you know, this word saying that they got baited and all this sort of stuff. It's just absurd. Well, that's really all I have for this video. I might make another Ruby video today or tomorrow, more or less reviewing the chapter. You know, my rambly, rough version of a review nowadays. But hey, seems like some people enjoy it, so I can't complain. That makes me happy. Um, so we'll see about that. I'm also considering doing a stream because this is funny. Apparently, my work is uh, banned from the Ruby subreddit. Like, you can't post it there or you will get in trouble. So I think it'd be funny to do a live stream looking at the Ruby subreddit and the fan art there and stuff, just kind of browsing the subreddit. Because, like, I don't know. There's something funny about that. My work's banned, and now we're just going to live stream the subreddit and talk about it. I don't know. Might be funny. Might be interesting. So those are some ideas of uh, content that might be coming out in the next day or two. And now, wrapping this video up, a big thanks to the kind people who promoted yesterday's video on Uzaki-chan. Uzaki-chan, yes, she won. It's great. And so did the Red Cross and the people in need. Great story. Shout out to Yodeling Shacks, Kuro Don, Anime Night 1992, 
Ishra Blackwolf, Shield Warrior, KJ Collins, Ollie Wooly Gaming, Verthica Frost Scale, Cultist, Yamitora One, Nanad Milankovic, Striker Red, Mr. Anime 343, uh, The Psychotic 2020, Spin Master Rakta, Sean, aka Itsuki, Amethyst Sukiyama, Christopher Arnold, The Christian Aspie, The Lancaster Kid, and there we go. Thank you all very much. Now, we hit 20. If I didn't say your name, I'm sorry. My system caps at 20. And uh, yeah, a lot of people promoted that video yesterday. Thank you guys very much. Much appreciated. And uh, again, like it, it's such a great story. So I'm glad you guys enjoyed that. Uh, thank you. Thank you for tuning in. And I'll see you next time.